welcome live and future YouTube viewers to Drama Mama. In this investigation, we will be diving deep into a growing conflict between two major lefty figures, Jimmy Dore of The Jimmy Dore Show and Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk. If you're here and you've never seen my content before, the goal of a Drama Mama investigation is to get to the bottom of a drama so that anybody can walk into it and walk away feeling like they understand what's going on, capable of drawing a final conclusion for themselves, and also understanding my take on the drama. What we aim to do is we aim to get all the receipts that we possibly can to get the full story. And uh, I try to be as impartial as possible sp when possible. And if I can't be impartial, I tell you up front. The reason why we do this is because, well, drama's messy. And I want people to be able to judge the drama for themselves. So if this sounds interesting to you, press that like button. Leave a comment below and make sure that you press subscribe because this is a growing channel and I'll do more Drama Mamas if more of you are going to watch them. So, on a previous episode of Drama Mama, which we'll be launching on the channel before this video comes out, we talked about uh, the massive, massive fight between the Young Turks, a lefty, a left-leaning news network of great fame, and the Jimmy Dore, the oh my goodness, the Jimmy Dore show, which is another popular lefty show, not nearly as big as TYT, but nonetheless very big and very influential. Unfortunately, the last Drama Mama we did had a pretty clear ruling, which was that Jimmy Dore was being a horrible person to Anna Kasparian and engaged in sexual harassment towards. Anna Kasparian. And the worst part is that the reason why that conclusion was the takeaway is because Jimmy Dore admitted to all of it gleefully. So this isn't even me having to weigh in and be like, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not leading you either way. We watched everything. We watched it all. He just owned up to it. But not in like an apologetic way. He owned up with it in a way that said, yeah, I don't care, which is pretty bad. Really, really bad. Laughed about it, was laughing about it, was saying he'd, he'd do it again, saying that he was owed an apology. Not good. And some other people were pulled into this drama along the way. One of them being none other than Kyle Kalinske. And it's interesting because... Um, it's interesting because what it seems like is that uh, Jimmy Dore is basically picking a fight with every person on the left. And I don't entirely know why, but he seems to be having an issue of forcing people's hands. So what we're going to find out today is if that is the case, if the drama is continuing, and what actually happened between Kyle Kalinske and Jimmy Dore that led to this. Because... In the past, Jimmy Dore and Kyle Kalinske have not had a whole lot of bad blood. In fact, they've generally been relatively aligned on issues. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Um, so let's let's get right into it, shall we? Um, let me just... Uh, oh, no. Oh, my notes. My notes. Here we go. Um, we are going to go first to the very convenient source of all of this information, which is... Kyle Kalinske himself. See, we love it when we can get first-hand sources. So we're going to go right here real quick, and we're going to jump to the first tweet of all of them, the, the tweet that started it all, okay? And that's right here. Kyle Kalinske, Secular Talk. This is the official account on Twitter. Kyle Kalinske screenshotted a like which listen i think like like screenshotting is a little bit of a petty thing to do not gonna lie i do think that's a little bit petty people like things all the time for all kinds of different reasons but this was the tweet that kyle kalinsky decided to call out jimmy Dore liked a tweet you mentioned crystal ball kyle kalinsky seriously though you're ignoring the serious story completely to avoid drama weak 
Biden legally illegally bombed Syria 23 hours ago. So Kyle Kalinske is not liking the fact that Jimmy Dore is essentially accusing him of ignoring the Syria story. The Syria story is not relevant to this actual discussion. It is a massive back and forth between Jimmy Dore and many other people. Jimmy Dore is very, very fixated on this story, and it seems to be uh, a, a linchpin for him, which is fine. I understand it. We all have issues that are important to us. Zonia with the tier one sub. Thank you so very much. Even though I'm technically a baby imp, I still feel like I've been here for a year. Well, you've been here for a year in our hearts. Thank you very much for the support. It means the world to me. Yeah, I find like policing to be a little weird, but it didn't end here. See, Jimmy Dore immediately retweeted this and said, I think they are talking about the OPCW cover-up and the slanderous conduct of your friends, Chink and Anna Kasparian, in trying to destroy the reputation of Aaron J. Mate. But you can keep pretending that that doesn't matter, I guess. The two didn't ho. I don't know who this person is. But these, Anna Kasparian and Cenk, or Jenk, are the two, I know, Jenk, Jenk, thank you, thank you. And Jenk uh, are the two people who Jimmy Dore has been involved in a argument with up to this point. And now he's saying on his official account that, uh, you know, he's basically trying to say, hey, your friends are out of line. Why don't you call them out? And now Secular Talk responds. Obviously, Aaron isn't paid by Russia. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So he, uh, he seems to agree with Jimmy on this point. Two, I did comment on it. And also, I was skeptical of the U.S. narrative, saying again, he agrees generally with Jimmy Dore. Now that I've stated the obvious, I'll comment tomorrow on other obvious things that you won't like. And Kyle Kalinske says, I wanted nothing to do with any of this, but if I'm dragged in, I'm dragged in. Full breakdown of the Jimmy Aaron TYT thing tomorrow. But guess what? Tomorrow is today. So, even though that tweet was made yesterday, we have the content to watch today. So we are going to find out what exactly went on, aren't we? Because that's what we do on Drama Mama. All right? So let's take a look. We've got a video right here for us to enjoy together. Let's see what Kyle has to say about this drama and see if we can come to any conclusions. So this segment is being recorded uh, pretty late at night. I actually didn't have the time to prep. We're going to boost that audio just a little all. bit. I was gonna prep a normal show for you all, but then a, a giant wrench got thrown into those plans because um, there was a little bit of Twitter drama that unfolded. There were some passive-aggressive shots that were taken at me. I didn't take kindly to that. Um, and so now I feel like my hand is being forced and I have to weigh in on an issue that I don't want to weigh in on. Hello, Zonia. Um, so I'm a little cranky. I'm a little tired. I don't really want to be doing this segment, but now I feel like I have to do this oh, segment. Oh, boy. Uh, because of the timing of all this, it has fucked up the potential for a normal show tomorrow, which is a shame because I'm going to have to hop in my car and go to D.C., and I don't have enough time to prep and do a show and get all that stuff taken care of. Okay, but anyway, enough damn. on the backstory and the current situation. Let's dive into it. So obviously I'm going to talk here about the drama between Jimmy Dore and Aaron Mate versus the Young Turks. So I just want to reiterate. Now oh. remember, there's a little bit of throwback to a previous episode, which will be posted to the channel before this video goes up, so you'll be able to watch it. Um, remember, we confirmed that in the back and forth between Aaron Mate and Jimmy Dore and, and TYT, TYT was telling the truth. Jimmy was lying about what was said by TYT. Just so that we know. That was, we confirmed that on video. You can go watch our video about it. Um, Aaron Mate and them went back and forth. But Anna Kasparian didn't lie. And they said that she lied, but she didn't lie. So this drama has been sort of perpetuated on the idea that, that Anna Kasparian is like a horrible liar. But that's just not true. And they're mostly hinging this 
on a joke, if I remember correctly on this one, a joke that Anna Kasparian made about Aaron Maté uh, being a foreign agent. Now, I think that's an irresponsible joke, but it was very clearly a joke in context. It was laughed about. It was the context of it was a joke. It was a, a, a stupid joke, in my opinion, but nonetheless a joke. And they have fixated on this for the entire time, just, just so that we know what we're talking about here. I don't want to do this segment. I don't want to talk about it. I've bent over backwards to stay out of this fight. Now, some of you might not like that. I don't care. I don't care. Okay. I'll never nice. hide a single thing from any of you when it comes to policy. But when it comes to personal shit, I don't want to get involved in it. And I want to stay out of it. And that's always how I've been. Mm. That's always how I will be. Okay. I'm an introvert. I hate drama. This is some fucking drama shit. And I want nothing to do with it. So, um, the reasons why I want nothing to do with this, number one, it's obvious. Jimmy, Jenk, and Anna are all personal friends of mine. Okay. Um, so it puts me in a really weird place. Now, you can pretend like that's not a good reason, but you all know it's a good reason, and you all know if you were in my shoes, you'd feel the exact same way. But the second reason is probably the more important reason, which is it's ugly and it's personal, which is all the more reason for me to stay out of this. And by the way, I should also add, I'm speaking on behalf, behalf of um, Crystal as well here because she also okay. has desperately wanted to try to stay out of this. Fair enough. Um, but Fair enough. Clearly, I can't. She's somehow managed to still not have to really dive into it at Lucky. least as much as I'm about to right now. All right, so um, we're going to break this down. Everybody understand, and please, for the love of God, listen to every word that I'm going to say here. Don't listen to parts oh, oh, of it. Oh, by the way, just for the record, I think that's a totally reasonable thing to say. I don't have any qualms with with uh, with Kyle so far. If there is, there are times in life where there are messy drama that you can't get involved on. Like it's just, it's just not necessarily that you can't, but that it's really uncomfortable to. And some of it, there is some wrongdoing. Like we determined, Jimmy definitely was in the wrong with regard to his interpersonal um, and professional engagements with Anna Kasparian. But if you're just sort of professional friends with those people, you might not want to be personally involved in every single bit of their drama. But Jimmy is making other people involved. Jimmy is going out of it. We saw the tweet. We saw the tweet that was shown of Jimmy stoking the fires and also responding, not just letting it go, but specifically bringing up that like, hey, Anna's your friend. You should be on my side in this. Which puts, which I agree, that puts Kyle in a really uncomfortable position. So I don't disagree with Kyle being like, I don't want to get involved on this. But I want to see what he has to say. Because it seems like he has a lot to say. And, but I, what I'm trying to say here is that I believe that Kyle is being honest when he says he didn't want to get involved. Like, I don't think he's being spineless. Why is it so hard to call out sexual harassment? Well, it might not be a matter of sexual harassment. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I I don't I would not be able to deal with that. But uh, Kyle doesn't like he. I don't think he goes on TYT frequently. I don't. As far as I know, he doesn't go on Jimmy's show frequently. He just kind of knows these people. And like, you can't expect every person in the world to make a statement about every person who does something wrong. So I agree with you that like it's not that hard to call out sexual harassment. But if you're like distantly involved, you might just say, okay, look, I have my own things to do. So again, I don't think that like Kyle is like, like not calling out sexual assault. I don't think that's fair. Yeah, let's continue. And then get triggered and then shut it off and fucking freak out or whatever. He's not on my team. He, and he fucking tweeted him. I'm not going to read your shit. Everybody calm the fuck down. <laughs> there are two separate conversations we're going to have here. There are policy conversations and funny. there's personal conversations. Two separate ones. It's not all the same. It's not all the same. Okay. There's policy stuff and there's personal stuff. Now this, I, I, obviously there is some truth to what he's saying here, but that's not always true. There, it is just a simple fact that if you are involved in politics, some policy discussions are going to be personal. You cannot swear off all. Again, that's why I say... When I have a bias in Drama Mama, I, I lay it out forward so people can understand. I laid out how we covered the drama, the do door drama. 
And when we did the drama mama on Sam Cedar and Steven Crowder, I was very clear about the fact there was no way I could be totally impartial. So it was mostly for the fun. Um, but the idea that you can be a political, uh, that you can be a political radio host of mass repute and not have personal connections to policy is a little bit silly. That's, that's something that I'll say to critique Kyle here. Saying that up front. So I'm only weighing in here because I've been dragged in. I have to give you my take now on every little aspect of this. And so that's what we have to do. Oh boy, here we go. Let's bring the timeline back. It wasn't always like this between Jimmy and TYT. You don't believe me? Take a look. Lo and behold, the Young Turks opened up their door to me and I walked in. And uh, we've been working together ever since. And I remember Steve-O was there and I met Anna that first time and JR and... Uh, it was, you know, I was so, you know, it was such a fun place to be. And so I was real thrilled and flattered that they invited me to be part of their group. And uh, th one mm. of the funnest times of my life was the Bernie Sanders campaign. And uh, so I just want to thank Jenk Uger and everybody at TYT for including me. Okay. I've been blessed. with. Well, we know that was the case. Jimmy worked at TYT for a long time. We know that they weren't always like this, but fair, fair. People in in my career and uh you know i was it was a real stroke of luck that i was able to work with the young turks uh and jenk you hmm. so uh good luck to them going forward and again i hope we can come together and uh and work on something in the future all right, so Jimmy Dore uh, has uh, exited the building, and uh, I think that a lot of you probably have seen his video talking about that. And uh, and he used to host Progressive Progressive, this show, along with the Jimmy Dore show. Uh, and so uh, first thing I'd like to say is I love Jimmy Dore. Uh, and <laughs> I always have... Now remember, remember, Chank did not know about the sexual harassment at that point. Don't yell at Cenk here. Cenk did not know, or sorry, Cenk. I'm so sorry. Cenk. Cenk did not know about it. And Zordon with the five tier one subs, thank you so much and good job on solving the math problem, imps. Um, but yes, Cenk did not know. This was discussed in the last Drama Mama that we went over. Um, they don't, these clips don't really prove anything. He's just proving that they, that they've had an association in the past. Cenk did not know. This is not Cenk covering for Jimmy. Um, Anna Kasparian, admitted that she that she never told Jenk because she was worried that Jenk would freak out and Jenk owned up to that he said he didn't do his job at the time because he said that he would have freaked out about it at the time and and that that was fair that Anna didn't feel comfortable telling him at the time yes and that was true and so I have a lot of crit critiques for Jenk but Jenk but Jenk has been straight up. He's been very honest in this so far. From what we can tell, everything that we can tell, Jenk has been very, very open and honest. So let's continue. Have and I hope that I always will. And and so it, it's um, certainly not anything personal at all. And we had gotcha. uh, wonderful, wonderful just, just moments thanks. on air with Jimmy uh, throughout uh, a great number of years here at the Young Turks. That is what I call a love fest. That is what I'd call uh, people who have deep admiration and respect for each other. Mm. Um, okay, I wouldn't go that far. That wasn't that long ago. <laughs> that wasn't that long ago. So since then, I don't want to paint an overly rosy picture. Of course there have been disagreements. There have been deep disagreements about Syria and Russia and force. force the vote and other things. But at that time... Um, you know, we were sort of at the at the peak of Russiagate, and I know, because I know all these people personally, that the Russiagate thing bothered Jimmy just as much off air as it did on air. He felt like okay. it sort of ruined friendships, and um, he couldn't believe that there were people who were falling for that bullshit. Um, and so, the more TYT would cover it, the more angry he would get. And then what would happen is Jimmy would go on air and do his show, and okay. Let me touch on this real quick, okay? <sighs> Russiagate was a obsession of the media for a long time, and it absolutely makes sense 
that TYT would cover Russiagate. They are a news channel, and it was a huge part of the news. Whatever you whatever you want to say about the coverage of Russiagate, I think there were times within Russiagate within the Russiagate coverage that were just very, very, very exaggeratory and 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 um, laughable almost. But there was real wrongdoing that happened there. So I don't. I've never understood. And I will be upfront with this. I've never understood Jimmy's position on Russiagate. His idea was basically that Russiagate was not fake, but that it was all, there was no substance to it. But there was. There was substance to Russiagate. Russiagate is not a conspiracy theory. Russiagate has hard evidence. There were people who were tried in a court of law. A complex court found that there was guilt in Russiagate. This is not. It's not just some invented thing. So I don't really like that people are playing down Russiagate already, even if the liberal establishment way, way, way over blew Russiagate. And I agree that they did. But nonetheless, there was substance to it that is important. And, I, and if you don't believe me, I will recommend you to very good coverage of it, which is Sam Cedar's coverage of various aspects of Russiagate was very thorough, very level-headed, very level-headed. So I highly recommend, if you're interested in going back at any point and revisiting it, watch Sam Cedar's live coverage of the hearings. It's very good. He would never, like, directly or overtly call out the Young Turks at that time, but there would be, like, little pot shots here and there about how, you know, Pause other it. lefty <laughs> shows are not, you know... Yeah, Sepnot, I watched it live. Um... I, uh, when, when, when the heat of, when the main heat of Russiagate was going on, I would watch Sam's coverage of it because I think Sam does very, very good job covering live events Telling like Telling you that. the truth about this Russiagate thing. And so that went on for a long time. I think at some point, eventually, somebody at TYT caught wind of the fact that Jimmy was taking shots at them. And, um, you know, that led Anna to go on Twitter and basically say something along the lines of, I think Jimmy's a grifter and I don't think he's an honest actor. Um, I don't agree with Anna on True, that. True, devious. She said that it was fucked up, but as soon as I read that tweet, I said, uh-oh, here we go. This shit is about to get nuclear, because Jimmy Dore has one gear, and that gear is nuclear. And I was exactly... Now... <sighs> okay, that is kind of true. Hey, thank you, Zordon, for another gifted tier one sub. Thank you so much. You're right. So Jimmy sort of went nuclear a little bit there. Now... It didn't really get, like, irreparable until Force the Vote. That's when it became irreparable. Now, to this point, on the substance, um, I'm with Jimmy so far. So, when it comes to Syria, when it comes to Russia, when it comes to Russia Gate, when it comes to Force the Vote, none of this is a secret. You guys have seen all my fucking segments. You know where I fall Ooh, on those policy issues. dropping an F-bomb. It's the most obvious thing in the world. Um, but now we get to this new hey, round thank you for the sub, where Ranch the Panda. war thank you. has ramped up, and it really is a war now. So this recent round all started with uh, this video from the Young Turks talking about Aaron Mate in their post game. Let's see. They said uh, Aaron Mate yelled at me, and so oh, Aaron I'm, Mate, oh, like, oh, oh, Aaron Mate. Oh, everyone cares what Aaron oh, Mate oh, has okay. to say, oh, right? Okay. The guy who denies that Syrian children were killed with chemical attacks. Yeah, yeah. And fuck Aaron Mate. The, yeah, fuck okay. you. Anyway, let's move on. Russians. Let's end the freaking pot. I can't. I can't. Okay, see, that's what happened. I can't stand. My, I can't stand that guy, and I can't stand the very intentional disinformation they put out there in regard to disgusting dictators around the world. The very people they seem to be working for, to be quite honest with you. Let's move on. All right. We're now, keep in mind, that was a pretty bold statement on Cenk's part. But TYT are a news channel. And I'm not going to say that news channels don't ever say things that are not true, but... If they said on their news broadcast that Aaron Mate was supported by the Russians and that was not true, Aaron Mate could very easily sue them and win. They are broadcasters. Again, very weird that this goes via a Twitter battle and not via a, a lawsuit, if that is truly a huge, such a huge issue. Hmm. 
a little strange there, isn't it? Done. Just, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just saying it's a very weird choice that if you believe that you've been genuinely slandered by one of, by the biggest left-leaning news source in America, that you wouldn't take action against that beyond just tweeting about it. That is a bit strange to me, but let's continue. So let's state the obvious. Uh, that was gross. That was a, a smear. It's so absurd. We don't know that, though. We don't know that, to be fair. We don't know if that was a smear. We'll see if Kyle provides any evidence, but we don't know that that was a smear. I heard that the first time I watched it, I literally laughed out loud. I laughed out loud. Um, Jenk was just mad that Aaron, like, responded to one of his tweets on Israel and Palestine where Jenk said something about sky gods and uh, Aaron dunked on him. But everybody dunked on Jenk for that tweet. Hassan Piker, his nephew, dunked on him for that tweet. Jenk took it personally that Aaron went after him on that tweet, and so I think that's what led to this segment or this mm. portion of the post game. That feels like a bit but, of a stretch. Yeah, there's that no feels like a bit excuse of a stretch. for this. This is ridiculous. Of course, Aaron Mate is not paid by dictators or paid by the Russians. He's a great journalist who's done a lot of great work. Um, so what do I think of that? Of course, I think of that the exact same thing. For the record, just so we know, for the record, Jank did not provide evidence for that claim that I know of. If anybody has evidence that was provided by Jank, I would highly recommend it. But he didn't. And that is a fair critique of Jank. Jank said that comment offhanded. And keep in mind that uh, that Anna, I was, I was wrong. I thought Anna was the one who said that. It was Jank who said that, not Anna. So... Anna Kasparian has been the focus of of uh, Jimmy's ire, but it was not Anna who said that. It was Jenk. Thing that all of you fucking knew I thought of it, which is like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. And also, let me say, I get McCarthy smeared all the time. Anybody who took the position that I took on Russiagate gets McCarthy smeared all the time. I literally debated Jenk on the issue of Russiagate. One of the many reasons I stopped reading my Twitter mentions is because I would get McCarthy smeared. So, listen, Aaron is upset that Crystal Ball and I haven't commented on this until now. Hmm. And, listen, again, for the record, I he's a victim in this. He didn't do anything wrong. He's minding his business. He's a lovely dude. And then he gets this from TYT. It is, it's super fucked up. Well, okay, in my defense, that's not honest. See, and I got to critique Kyle here because we covered this in the last one. We know that Aaron Mate was going really hard against TYT. So it's not like he was not there throwing shade. He was tweeting, like, a lot about TYT. We went over those tweets in the last Drama Mama because they were a part of the last Drama Mama. That's just not true, Kyle. That's a fact check. It is not true that there wasn't shots being fired on both sides or that Aaron Mate is some sort of innocent person. Uh, Aaron Mate was 100% digging in on TYT, and I think that TYT was firing back. I do agree that Jenk did not uh, did not source that claim properly, and I agree. We'll talk about that all in the conclusion, but it should be noted that this is not true. Crystal's defense, the reason why we didn't say anything about this is because we thought it's fucking obvious, of course. <laughs> of course they, they look ridiculous in this, and I don't think they're convincing many people, bringing many people to their side. Hmm with stuff like that, right? Wouldn't you agree? And then also, listen, I, when I got into my, you know, scandal about my old tweets when Mike Cernovich dug them up and wrote an article calling me a sexist and a racist and uh, all the negative things uh, in the book. Pausing it again. Sorry for being a pause, Andy, but that's why you're here. I agree with, I agree that Kyle Kalinske was very unfairly smeared by Mike Cernovich. Just so you know, Mike Chernovich did the same thing to Sam Cedar, by the way. What Mike Chernovich does, Mike Chernovich is a uh, pizza gator, a gamer gator turned pizza gator turned QAnon. I don't even know what he's doing now. He is a, uh, a politics and wellness grifter who uh, is basically what he does is he tries to generate cancel trains among the right against people all the time. And sometimes he has success. He, for example, uh, got uh, um, got Sam temporarily fired from MSNBC 
That's right. Mike Chernovich dug up an old tweet of Sam Cedar that was totally out of context from years before, and it resulted in Sam Cedar temporarily losing his job at MSNBC before MSNBC then had to make a public apology and bring him back on. Just so you know. Nobody defended me. And listen, I'm That's totally not fine not true. With that. That's not true. Plenty of people defended you against my, Mike Chernovich. Don't don't do that. Lots of people defended you. I'm I just defended you just now before you even said that. Tons of people defended you against Mike Chernovich. Tons. It, you know, I I never held a grudge over it. I never thought like how dare, you know, all my friends in lefty circles not come out of the woodworks and, you know, put their neck on the line for me. I just thought Listen, this is par for the course. I don't expect everybody to come. I'm not entitled to other people going out there and responding for me. I just thought, hey, it is what it is. This isn't high school. We don't have clicks. People could think whatever they want to think, yes, and yes. I'll handle it on there my own. There are clicks. There are clicks. And it was the exact same thing with Crystal when it came to that article that Nathan J. Robinson wrote not that long ago, where she basically, where he basically argued that she's emboldening Nazism because she does a show with Sagar, who's populist right, and populist right. Okay, to be fair, um, to be fair, Sagar is really, really bad. And I don't think it's fair, well, I don't think it's fair to just outright call Sagar a Nazi. But I can understand why some people are very suspicious of Sagar. And if you'll recall, do we know what, uh, what the most iconic regime of the populist right is? Do, do we know? I think we know. The popu the most famous populist right movements in history have been the fascist movements across Europe. Um so and and I will say that Sagar has some takes about elites and them that are very, very concerning. So I think this is a bit of an unfair characterization by Kyle here. Um, because I think there's valid criticism to be levied about the fact that Crystal does grant, a, does grant credence to a lot of Sagar's views by doing a fair and balanced both sides show. Does Sagar talk about cultural Marxism? If I remember correctly, yes, but I don't know off the top of my head. Is like what the Nazis were, so therefore... You're being, like, too soft on the right and too soft on Tucker Carlson, and you're basically, like, emboldening Nazis and stuff. It was a silly article. I don't think Nathan's arguments were very good, but, you know, Crystal fucking hated that shit. She read it, and she's like, fuck this shit, and okay. nobody defended her. That's so, not true. You know, That's not true. There was a lot of people defending Crystal. A lot of people defending Crystal. The idea, again, this is like a... This is something that Kyle tends to do where he plays himself up as being like the only reasonable person. I don't like this. I don't I the idea that nobody defended Crystal during that is ridiculous. That's not true. And people did defend Kyle. Like the idea that they're like these soul beacons among hate is not true. Just not true. I don't think she cares. She was upset by the article, but she's not mad at other lefties for not like immediately coming out there and responding because it is what it is. It's not that big a deal. We all go through this shit online. People always say shit about us, and we could all have our positions on it, but... That's fair. It's not like, fair. you know, we're the Justice League rushing to everybody's defense at every moment. I watch this stuff unfold like everybody else watches it unfold, and sometimes I just look at it and I'm like, well, that's dumb, and I move along, and I don't, you know, do a whole monologue or whatever over it. So anyway, listen, I'm not okay. trying to make an excuse. Um, what happened to Aaron was wrong. Okay. And, but I think that's so obvious that I'm like, really? You need me to say it? Or like, you he's on Russiagate. You don't know what the things I've said on Russia. You don't know the things I've said on Syria. Like, I'm fucking 100% in alignment with Aaron on all those things. Would I agree with him on all that and then turn around and be like, you know, I think TYT's right and he's paid by fucking Russian dictators. I mean, honestly, it's, it's absurd. So after that happened, okay. Jimmy and Aaron responded. Oh, makes perfect sense. They responded a number of times. It makes perfect sense. Aaron has gone on a number of outlets to respond. He wants to sort of clear his name. I don't blame him for that as all at all. Um, the Young Turks then doubled down and brought on some idiot who parroted the State Department line on Syria. It was really sad to watch. <laughs> it was like, what are you doing? Don't double down on this. You're so wrong. It's You're not even close to right. It was just sad to watch. Um, but then there was another and the escalation, escalation came when this happened. 
And I'll tell you this story, the story about uh, uh, that. And this is what we covered, this entire thing. Uh, this is right here what we we're talking about. This is what we covered in the last Drama Mama, the video, which will be live soon. Followed by an apology card you wrote me for degrading harassment. Uh, Anna Kasperian used to dress when I worked there uh, unbelievably inappropriately for a newsroom. <laughs> she looked like she was going to a rave. The skirt, one time she came into the newsroom with a skirt so short. It wasn't a pencil skirt. It was like a fluffy one, too, but so short that she bent over in front of me, and I literally saw her ass. Jesus. And her again, thong. She's watching this again is very uncomfortable. Jimmy was so in the wrong here. It's unbelievable. So gross. This is just so bad. I literally saw it. Everybody saw it. And I go, hey, Anna, nice news skirt. <laughs> and everybody laughed like they laughed louder like, than I on, thought they dude, would this is bad and so it humiliated her oh god I can't she got we're humiliated in the middle of the newsroom and I did it and I felt bad I, I, at that time we were friends do you see what I'm saying about him literally just owning up to doing it he just he just self-reported he just straight up said everybody laughed I humiliated her and it was great but he just sees that her, she was being too slutty. Even though he sexually harassed her, it's her fault for how she was dressing. Genuinely, just textbook gross shit. And I Thank you very much, Brim, for the walls, three tier one right? subs. For, for means the like world to me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brim. You're going to bend over and show me your ass? I think that's a little... I'm not Again, offended, what the... but I think that's a little risque. Um, imagine if I did that, if I walked around <laughs> showing my ass to everybody. So uh, when she did, so when I did that, so she got really mad. She got, you know, she got uh, humiliated. Her face turned red. She tried to insult me back, and it just fell flat. And she looked, you know, bad. And I felt bad for her. I didn't fight. I didn't want to make her feel that. But I just wanted to make a little joke. And um, all I said was, "Hey, Anna, nice news skirt." And everybody in the newsroom, because everybody saw how inappropriate she dresses. She used to dress. And everybody saw it. This is and, so uh, goddamn cringe. So that's why it got such a huge laugh, and she was so humiliated. So I felt bad for her. 58 thens with the Prime sub. Thank you so much. Prime subs are very, very helpful. Thank you very much. So the next Thank day, so I wrote her a card thens. saying, hey, I'm sorry. I won't do that again. 58 hens. That was inappropriate. You don't have to worry about that happening again. I won't comment on your clothes anymore. I should have said no matter how fucking ridiculous... <laughs> Look, I mean, and then he, in this talk, he retracts his apology. He's like, oh, I should have said no matter how ridiculous. What an asshole. Just total scumbag behavior here. This is just a total L on Jimmy's part. There is no defending this. Commenting on her thong. On her thong <laughs> that I could see. So uh, let's bring in Max. Now, uh, Max, where, where would you like to take the conversation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't uh, really where I thought the conversation was going to go. I don't have the same history with these people. So uh -huh. I uh, have no problem with Anna Kasparian's style of dress. I By the way, Aaron Mate, who we're discussing here, is the co-host of this podcast, The Gray Zone. So The Gray Zone is Aaron Mate and Max Blumenthal's show so Aaron Mate this is the co-host who's on with Jimmy Dore right now and keep in mind that as we revealed in our previous drama mama on this exact subject this guy is uncomfortable but he doesn't really push back on any of it at all kind of weird Hey, uh, Redcon, thank you so much for the tier one sub and actually a fungus zone. thank you so much for the People gifted sub deeply appreciate want. it um, <laughs> my reaction as I was listening to that live, and by the way, I was with Crystal when it happened, we started cringing more and more the more Jimmy talked, and ultimately my reaction was exactly like Max Blumenthal's. In that moment, we are all Max Blumenthal's. Hold on just a second here. Aaron Mate has written for RT. Hold on a second. Wait just a minute here. Hold on just a second. This is a podcast published by RT with Aaron Mate. RT is Russia State Media. This is 
He was, he's literally paid by the Russians. If he took money for this, he was literally paid by the Russians, which means that Jenk wasn't even smearing him. He was just telling the truth. Hold on a second here. Wait just a second. Now, it is possible that he wasn't paid for that appearance. Hold on. Okay, yeah, so he's done some stuff with Russia today. Now, hold on. To be, to be fair, to be, to be fair, it appears that he only had, he's only been on RT a few times. So, if we're going to be as fair as possible here, Aaron Mate has indeed done work with RT, which is Russian state media. If he's taken money from that, Jenk is not telling a lie by saying that he's accepted money from the Russians. However, 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 there's still a bit of a stretch to say that someone is paid by the Russians when they've only done two things on Russia today. So this might need to be investigated further as to whether... There is evidence to what Jenk said, but Jenk did not provide that evidence. Nonetheless, it is true that Aaron Mate has done work with Russia Today, state-owned media. Interesting. The Gray Zone, uh, Cotton Depat says, the Gray Zone is very sus. They uncover funding source of other organizations, but they are not transparent with their own, and they never critique the Russian state. That's interesting. I hear there's some videos about that. Maybe we'll watch a video about it later. Let's continue this for now. And understand something, guys. My issue is actually not with the original incident that Jimmy's talking about there. Now, to be fair, Jimmy says, hey, it was a bad joke. Anna says, it wasn't a bad joke. It was Jimmy commenting on me in a sexual way in front of my students or students. Dude. Dude. Come the fuck on. This is where, oh, he's going to lose me. Please don't lose me. Dude, that is so bad. There is just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like, you can't, you can't both sides this. We're in the room at the time. Um, now, I wasn't there. I'll never know exactly what happened. I don't think Jimmy's a sex pest. I don't think he's a criminal. I don't think this is a hashtag me too thing. But my issue with the thing we just saw is what he just said right there. Oh, she dresses inappropriate. Inappropriate? Who the fuck are you to determine what is and isn't appropriate for her? Are you a fundamentalist Christian? I mean, that's like some hardcore Republican thing to say. And if I'm being objective about this, even though Jimmy's my friend, if somebody spoke about my mom or my sister or my girlfriend like that, it would take every fiber of my being to not want to beat the shit out of them. Because that was that's humiliating. And he admits that it was a humiliating thing in the segment, but then it doesn't occur to you that maybe bringing this up again and talking about it in the way you're talking about it is, like, gonna humiliate her yet again? That doesn't occur. And it just indicates that you were a fuckhead in the first case. Sorry, this is a little... This part, I think, is a little weak from Kyle so far. ...occur to you? So listen. Let's see. Let's give it time. I though. just look at that and I think, that's kind of gross. And so... My initial reaction was, and I still feel it to this day, is, whoa, okay, I want nothing to do with any of this. So, like, to that point, sure, at any point I could have jumped in and regulated and been like, all right, come on, guys. Uh, Jimmy and Aaron uh, are, are right about X, Y, and Z. Uh, the Young Turks, you're wrong about most of the policy stuff here, let's be serious. But I could have stepped in at any point there before that and been like, here are my thoughts on the whole thing. And everybody would have been like, okay, it's fine. Once this happened, I was like, oh, shit, I don't want to go anywhere near this. I don't want to touch this with a 10-foot pole, dog. And listen, mm. I think you're lying if you don't think that's understandable. Of course that's understandable. What a weird position I'm in as friends with all of them, and then this is unfolding in front of me. So Crystal and I were planning to have Jimmy on Crystal, Kyle, and friends one day. We were planning to have jank on crystal kyle and friends one day and then as we watched this we decided you know what we don't want to have either one of them on right now because then we would be responsible 
for getting in the middle of this absolute mess. And mm. we would have to ask really uncomfortable questions that are really personal in nature. And I don't want to have anything to do with some personal shit. Nothing at all. I care about policy. I don't care about personal shit. I don't want to be involved in this sort of stuff. So, you know, mm. people might disagree with us on that. People might like the fact that it's, you know, you'll get a lot of clicks out of it. And nah, you know, Kyle's doing a lot of self-defense here. This is a lot of self-defense on Kyle's part. Um, it's like some reality star fighting stuff. No, dude. No, it isn't. Like, one of the most well-known uh, female reporters on the entire left for the last, like, two decades was sexually harassed by Jimmy Dore, and Jimmy Dore admits it and thinks it was good. That's not mess. That's not that messy. I get it. Like, at the beginning of this, I did say I understand where he's coming from to a certain degree, but, like... This right now is like, this is like almost excusing it. It's like, I get it. You don't need to keep saying why you weren't getting involved. We understand that it's personal, but it's not like it's that messy. Like, this is pretty straightforward what happened. I understand if you don't want, you know, you're not required to make a statement about everything. But this feels very weird. I don't want anything to do with it, man. I don't want anything to do with it. So now you might be saying, okay, well then why are you talking about it now? <laughs> Well, the reason I'm talking about it now is I was dragged into it because I think Jimmy's upset that I'm not crusading in his defense or something true, or agreeing with true. him 100% on every aspect of this policy-wise and personal-wise. So um, he did some passive-aggressive stuff today on Twitter that caught my eye. The first thing, as you can see here, is um, he liked this tweet. Somebody tweeted at Crystal and me and said, Damn, seriously, like. though, you're ignoring Also, Also, hey, real quick notice. Remember remember when uh, remember when people were trying to make fun of me for saying that, like, uh, Twitter was a mess because of the because of the drama, uh, because of the uh, the kink at pride drama? Remember when people were like, oh, Twitter, who cares? Literally, one a channel like 12 times my size is like policing live right before your very eyes. So I never want to hear that shit again. Everyone's terminally online these days. Sorry, story, buddy. The Syria story completely to avoid drama week. Now, of course, I responded to this with a bunch of question marks because the idea that I ignored the Syria thing is factually wrong. I covered it literally on my last show and it was the very first video. You want to know why? Because I never, ever, 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 ever shy away from anything policy-wise. The policy shit is my job. It's my job to come out here, give you news, give you mm. facts, give you information, and give you my opinion. And so okay. that's what I do. What is not my job is some weird interpersonal beef regulation, which now, unfortunately, I've been dragged into. But again, I want nothing to do with that. I'm going to reiterate that a thousand times throughout this segment. True, you already so, have. So, true. Listen. The tweet that he liked says, you're going to ignore the Syria story, and I quote, completely to avoid drama. No, I'm avoiding the drama to avoid the drama. I'm diving headfirst into the Syria shit because that's my fucking job, and of course I'm going to dive headfirst into it. Okay. So I see that, I'm like, what the, like, what are you doing, Jimmy? What are you doing? You know I'm going to talk about the Syria shit, and I did talk about the Syria, sh Syria shit, so why are you liking a tweet that says, I didn't talk about the Syria shit? Um, and then we got this response from him. Hello, so he says, and he's quoting somebody else who said this, but this is the sentiment he agrees with. I think they are talking about the OPCW cover-up and the slanderous conduct of your friends Jenk and Anna in trying to destroy the reputation of Aaron Mate. But you can keep pretending those, pretending that doesn't matter, I guess. Okay, so we already talked about the Aaron Mate thing. The other thing they're talking about here is the OPCW report. They're claiming I never said anything about it. Really? This is from my very last live stream. So we're the rebels in Syria doing, so we are the rebels in Syria doing the chemical attacks on the people. So we are, we're, it says W-E apostrophe R-E. I think this person is saying, were, was it the rebels that did the chemical attacks on the people in Syria? You guys had to, you know, follow this stuff, the, the OPCW um, whistleblower. I don't know if you guys remember this, but this just came out not that long ago. 
It turns out that all the claims from the Western governments were total bullshit, and they had no evidence for it. So yes, the claims of the chemical attacks against the, you know the civilians in in Syria done by the Assad government that turns out to be total bullshit. And it's not me saying it; it's whistleblowers who were at the UN who were like, "That's not true at all." This was a big story, but it was kind of hidden. It was only like Aaron Mate and a handful of other people who really blew the whistle on it. So and listen. I'm going to toot my own horn here a little bit, but yeah, uh, I called that one from the beginning. It was very similar to the Saddam has weapons of mass destruction, and it just, it, it was not true. And in the case of Assad, I don't know if you guys remember this. Remember when Assad gave up all of his chemical weapons? Remember that? There was a moment where it was like John Kerry and some Russian counterpart doing a press conference, and they basically said, is there anything that Syria could do to make you not, like, attack or invade? And um, basically... Kerry said something like, yeah, give up all your chemical weapons, but that's not going to happen. And then the very next day, or within the next week, Assad was like, here, take all my chemical weapons. And they did. They came and they took all the chemical weapons. And so it's funny that, like, everybody forgets that part. But then they go on to say, well, obviously he was attacking civilians um, with gas. So in other words, at a time when he was, he already basically won the war. He was going to attack his own civilians with gas, which would bring the West right back into it. It's nonsense. And it turns out we learned it was total nonsense. Now, that's not even the only time I brought it up. I brought it up three or four times. I've done literally over a hundred segments okay. on Syria. Now, granted, most of those, I mean, almost all of them are Posadis about... Assadist John says one out of 30 is possibly fake um, there for Assad. Okay, so there's like... Well, look, look, I don't know enough about this specific issue. We're not talking about... We're in the drama. We're not doing the issues here. We're not doing the policy here. Okay? This is the drama, okay? So I actually am not, that is not my my area of expertise. Foreign policy is not the thing that I cover all the time. I'd like to do it more in the future. So we're not going to talk about that specifically. I just, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I don't know enough. I'm not informed enough about that to be able to say which of these claims is correct. Uh, Sorry. The Civil Dylan War. Dylan debunked but, this? Well, then you there know, you go. Since we got the OPCW whistleblower... And Aaron did that great work. Almost almost every segment on Syria, I've brought up that fact. So, I mean, I don't know what you want me to tell you. I'm doing policy shit exactly right, yet I'm still somehow getting these weird passive-aggressive criticisms. Um, so, right. here's the bottom line, guys. Everybody needs to stop dragging me into some bullshit. This has absolutely nothing to do with me. Um, if they want to keep duking it out, they can keep duking it out. Um, I don't buy this notion that, hmm. well, everything they're doing is talking about policy. Nonsense. Because if that was the case, well, guess what? I've done 103 segments on Syria, 82 on Russia, 16 on Russia Gate. I debated Jenk on Russia Gate. I did 217 segments on Medicare for All, and maybe about a dozen referencing directly or indirectly Force the Vote, and I was a supporter of Force the Vote. So everybody knows where I stand on all the policy stuff, yet I'm being dragged into this. And I don't want to be dragged Zordon, into this. Zordon, with five more gifted ugly, tier one subs. Thank you personal. so very much, and the Zordon. Final point I want My to make is God, this. thank you so very Here's much. Here's where everybody's wrong. Okay. Rewarding the math. Rewarding the math. TYT accuses Jimmy of being a grifter and a right winger. They're wrong on both of those things. It doesn't matter. I disagree, but okay. What you think of Jimmy, personally or otherwise. He's not a grifter. He believes every word he's saying. Guaranteed. I know Jimmy. That's a fact. He believes every single word he's saying. Uh, the idea he's a right winger is also ludicrous. He's attacking Democrats from the left. He's attacking the left flank of the Democrats from... I don't entirely agree with that. I really don't agree with that. I don't think that Jimmy is good on progressive issues in general. I just don't think that's true. Uh, I think that Jimmy Dore has uh, a track record of supporting right-wing people like, like Tulsi. Tulsi, who's anti-trans, who literally has been going around and supporting right-wing efforts on anti-trans measures. Uh, Jimmy Dore... Uh, had Boogaloo Boys on his show, like, like, not, not, not just on to talk to. Like, he said nice things about the Boogaloo Boys. He tried to rehab the Boogaloo Boys image. I'm sorry, but I think there's fair critique about Jimmy Dore pandering to right wing people. I just, this isn't necessary. Why is it necessary to defend 
Jimmy Dore's personality to this degree, dude. On the left. Now, you might not like that. You might think some of his attacks are unfair. You might think some of his attacks are misleading on, or whatever. We're not going to get into that now. I got a, a thousand criticisms and a thousand points of agreement. But he ain't a right winger and he ain't a grifter. Okay. At the same time, Jimmy <laughs> accuses TYT of being basically corrupt and being liars. I disagree. You know who else used to disagree? This guy. Well, actually, I was wondering about, about Cenk because, you know, I saw Cenk at the e-board meeting and I asked him some tough questions about how he's taking money from Jeffrey Katzenberg. You know, he got a $20 million investment to hire some journalists. And so far, I haven't seen a lot of them, you know, doing the original investigative reporting that they're supposed to be doing. I see a lot of punditry. And unfortunately, on the main show, it tends to be uh. kind of mainstream. You know, does he think that this money that he's taken from the establishment Democratic party would influence him and of course he says it hasn't but now we see you know this reporting about russia so i know that you may not want you have to choose your words very carefully but i don't um i i i don't think that that's i don't think jake is uh push, preaching a false narrative for uh investment money uh, that's i think he truly believes it you know um i take you know jake is a what I call a natural Republican, right? So he was a Republican at first for a long time, and he talks about this openly, about Lamau. how he, he even led pro-Iraq war rallies, right? The first one. And He's um, fix that. And a so it's, issue. That's why people are drawn to him, because it's this, this great journey where he went from this, you know, meathead uh, into this progressive, right? And so that's mm. what appealed to me about his journey and about, to, about Cenk. So I think, you know, it's, if he is what we consider to be wrong on an issue, it's just because he's genuinely uh, believes it. I, I, that, that money, that, that investment money, I, 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 that's not how Jenk works. And if he's making a mistake, it's just he's making a mistake. Or, or, you know, I disagree with him. I disagree with him before they were taking, they took that money. Well, the first uh, gas attack in 2013, and Barack Obama wanted to bomb Syria over that, and they believed it. And it was proven false. It was since proven false. Jimmy's 100% right there. And that wasn't that long ago. Let me break this down further. Listen. TYT took investment money from a yeah, guy Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to say that I, I kind of have some critiques for, for Kyle's choice of clips here. But let's continue. The name of Buddy Romer. Buddy Romer is a former Republican politician. Now, when they took that money, did they then turn around and on the show, they started supporting Republican politicians and pushing Republican policies? No, they didn't, right? Because the whole point of the deal was, hey, we're only going to make a deal if you have zero editorial control over the show. Jank would only make deals with people who would have no editorial control over the show. So that's exactly what happened with Buddy Romer. He took money from a former Republican politician, and they didn't end up backing Republicans nonstop. Now, it goes deeper than that, too, though, because he took money from Katzenberg. Did that make him change his opinions? No. I got news for you guys. If you've watched TYT for a long time, you'll know this. He's always had a lot of cringe opinions. So, for example, Wait, before he took money from Romer or Katzenberg, Jank always referred to himself as, and I quote, a mild interventionist. <laughs> what? He has always been relatively hostile to protectionism. He says he believes more in free trade than other lefties like me and Jimmy. I don't know what Aaron's position is on, on free trade and protectionism, but I know Jimmy is more in alignment with me on that. Jank was always like, I'm more of a free trader. Jank has always been sort of openly hostile to unions. There's clips back from TYT in like 2008 where he mentions unions and he's like, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of unions. So listen, I disagree with Jank on all of that, but I disagreed with him on it before he took investment money and after he took investment money. And this is a guy who walked away from a million dollar MSNBC contract because he felt like they were going to muzzle him. So then would he turn around and take investment money for his company for them to muzzle him or force him to change his opinions? No, he wouldn't do it. Now, again, I want to be clear about something. This isn't me saying, you can never disagree with TYT. Of course, I have a thousand disagreements with them. Again, I literally debated Jenk on Russiagate, okay? And there's a okay, million dude. other things okay. I could go on and on about okay. where I think they're wrong. But it's definitely not 
that they're changing opinions because they got the money. They would only take money from people who left them full editorial control and wouldn't impact the direction of the show. If you dislike the direction of the show, you could dislike it on its own merits. You could dislike it because you disagree with Jenk and Anna. It doesn't have to be because of the money thing and they're, you know, nefarious, twisting their evil mustache behind closed doors like, ha 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 I will now change direction of the show because I got the money. Listen, the only criticism I have hmm. on that front is they made a lot of bad business decisions. They okay. made a lot of bad business okay. decisions. All I right. think it's sure. gross if you take investment money and then you also turn around and do grassroots fundraising. Don't do that. Because then the people who are giving you the grassroots money, they feel like they're the ones who are funding the whole shit, and then you're also raising investment money. I just think that's gross. I think that's a bad business decision. I think the optics okay. of taking investment money, whether it's from Romer or Katzenberg, I think the optics are terrible. Payne Sama says, Kyle just seems scared of Jimmy Dore's audience and the optics of not calling out Jimmy for his sexual harassment simultaneously. Yeah, we'll get to the conclusion. Terrible. We'll get to the conclusion in the end. You know, um, on that alone, I would have said don't do it. Never mind the fact that they did it and they did grassroots fundraising. But what I'll tell you is this. Jimmy believes every word he says and TYT believes every word they say. And so, okay. uh, listen, in summation... This is this basically this is all I have to say about this. I'm always going to tell you guys exactly what I think on policy stuff on cuz that's my job. That's my job. But when it gets personal, especially with people who I know and am friends with, I want absolutely nothing to do with it. I want to be a million miles away from it. So, I don't want to hear about some hashtag me too shit. I don't want to hear about some bickering. Okay, dude. Okay, that is the weakest part of this entire essay so far. I don't want to hear about how you think somebody's a grifter. Dude, you're talking about your friend. You keep saying Anna's your friend, but Anna is telling you that she was sexually harassed and Jimmy admitted it. Right winger, and you think somebody's corrupt and they're a liar. Basically, as long as they're calling each other grifters and right wingers and corrupt and liars, and as long as we're having the conversation about dressing inappropriately and shit, I'm out. Not only do I not want anything to do with this, I, I don't want anything to do with them either. Them. I'm done with all of them. What? That doesn't even make sense. Wait, that doesn't make sense. You don't want anything to do with any of them because one of them sexually harassed the other one? Because I'm an adult. And I got no time for this high school type shit, okay? Wait, and you <sighs> sexual harassment is like more than just high school shit, my dude. I think it's not high school shit, but you're wrong. You're fucking wrong. Because if we are just talking about policy again, I got dragged into this shit. Because supposedly, oh no, it is all about policy. Is it really? Wait, but well, Anna didn't drag you in. Jimmy did. Okay, we're gonna talk about and, this. We're uh, gonna talk about this. You didn't think that what are the numbers again? My 103 segments on Syria, my 82 segments on Russia, my 16 on Russiagate, my 217 on Medicare for All, and maybe a dozen on Force the Vote. That wasn't sufficient for you to understand where I am policy-wise in this conversation. So listen, on the, on the policy stuff, yes, I happen to agree much, much more with Jimmy and Aaron, without a doubt. Um, on the personal stuff, at this point, I want nothing to do with any of you guys. Dude, and come on. You... Dude, come on. I get it if you said you didn't want to get involved, but you're involved now, and you're not even going to make a statement. Dude, what the fuck? I don't like that? You can fuck off. And I'm not just talking to them now. I'm talking to people in the audience who might not agree with how I'm approaching this or, or what I'm doing. I don't fucking care. I don't care. I'm an introverted guy. I don't like drama. I'm being dragged into some bullshit. So what I'm doing, dipping my toe in the bullshit because I got dragged into it, and I'm getting the fuck out, and I'm going to be nowhere near it. Okay? And I hope, I hope I don't get dragged into it again where I have to respond again to some shit. Because I don't want to do it. I don't like to do it. But if I got to do some shit, I got to do it. And that's why I'm doing this segment right now. But hopefully this is the last thing I have to say about this. I want nothing to do with it. I want to be a thousand miles away from it. And you should respect that. But if you don't respect that, I don't give a fuck. Okay. 
Well, that was certainly a video. That was certainly a video. All right. So let's talk now, okay? Because that's the latest in this particular wave of drama. That's the latest. There's not been much firing back and forth since then. This video came out uh, yesterday. Or no, it came out today. We'll see if there's more in the future. So the purpose of this video was that Kyle got dragged in on drama he didn't want to be in. But then he, his response to Jimmy. Now remember, Jimmy was the one who pulled him in on the drama. Jimmy was the one who pulled him in, not Anna. Anna and, and Jenk did not pull him in. Jimmy did. Yet, he got mad at Jimmy for pulling him in, but he said that he didn't want anything to do with Jenk and Anna Kasparian because it was high school bullshit. Even though it was Jimmy was the one that pulled him in. Do you know what this sounds like to me? This sounds... Like, Kyle is afraid of Jimmy's audience. Because when Kyle talked about what Jimmy said, he couldn't defend it. And yet, all that he says, all that he's said here is, uh, oh, uh, I don't want to be involved with this high school bullshit. But this isn't high school bullshit. This is Jimmy Dore openly and gleefully admitting that, you know, and this isn't hashtag me too bullshit. This is Anna literally did everything she could to prevent this from happening. We covered that in the drama mama. We know that's true. Thank you very much, Brim, for the gifted sub. It means the world. So what the hell? So wait, what? Well, so wait, what the hell? What was the point of this video? In this video, what he said was, I don't think that either of them are grifters, and I want nothing to do with them, even though only Jimmy was the one who was trying to get me involved. Jimmy is essentially trying to win Kyle over so that Kyle will go against TYT, and Kyle basically shat on TYT the entire video before saying that, yeah, Jimmy might have done a sexual harassment, but that's some Me Too bullshit. Es Escalvier says, so the dude that had nothing to do with the sexual harassment simply does not want any part part of the Jimmy Dore versus TYT drama gets demonized. Anna's a big girl. She doesn't need any online white name sims. No, 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 no. You're, you're not listening. Listen. Listen, okay? Listen closer, Escalvier. Escalvier. Just, I want you to listen a little bit closer to what I'm saying. I, at the very beginning of this, I said I understand why Kyle Kalinsky didn't want to get involved, but he did. He put out a video on it. He said, I'm getting involved be because Jimmy involved me. And then he proceeded to not actually get involved. He proceeded to simply defend himself the entire video and say, I'm good. I'm great. I didn't do anything wrong. Don't involve me. And then he basically shared the blame between Jenk Anna and Jimmy, even though Jimmy was the only one who actually tried to involve, uh, involve him. That is really weird. That is, that is very weird to me. Grim, uh, Grimble Gromble says, this seems like a really simple issue that Kyle's spinelessness has turned into a convoluted cafeteria drama. Just say door is a fuck and be done with it. Well, but I mean, he admitted that that made, that that made him uncomfortable. He just wouldn't openly denounce it. He wouldn't denounce it. Um... Which is very strange. Angel Dust. Hi, everyone. I've been watching the stream from my TV for a few hours, but I'm on chat. Aw, welcome to chat. Yeah, there does seem like a lot of... Um, it does seem like there's a lot of alienation, which is weird to me. I don't know why you would make a 35-minute video that doesn't actually sort anything. That doesn't actually get to the bottom of anything. All he did was show old clips of Jenk and Jimmy Dore um, being okay with each other. And then use that as a justification for why he thinks they shouldn't be fighting. But the fight is 
much bigger than that. The fact, the fight is that uh, Jimmy Dore has been continually harassing Anna Kasparian, including sexual harassment, which he owned up to, he admitted to. I just think, I, I just think that, I think that this was a, a strange response to me. And I, I find that to be very weird. Yeah, why didn't he just say, I'm not touching? Yeah, it's like he did all this preamble. Remember the video, beginning of the video, he was like, oh, I'm getting involved. I'm gonna, I've been brought in. I need to lay down the law. I need to lay down the truth. And then his truth was, I don't want to be associated with any of you because Jimmy sexually harassed you. And then Jimmy tried to bully me into being on his side. But I am going to dis disassociate from all of you. That is very weird to me. That is like the behavior of somebody who knows that their buddy that they're afraid of did ro something wrong, but they don't want to piss off the buddy. That was a 35-minute video that didn't actually sort the drama at all. Why not just say, I'm not getting involved? Because he, at the end, was not involved. He said, nah, I agree with Jimmy on almost everything policy-wise, but on this personal issue, I mean, I could play, we could play this back, right? We can play this right back, can't we? We could. We could literally just, I could just go right back and I could just give you the conclusion at the end, which is, I agree with Jimmy on policy issues, but on the personal stuff, I don't want anything to be involved with. So, what, what are you talking about then? So then what, what do you mean? When women talk about men not calling out their buddy's misogyny, this is it. Well, yeah, I mean, that is the, okay, so like, let's do a second here. Do we all remember what Me Too is about? Me Too was a hashtag that was generated to, to, to create solidarity between people who have been victims in silence. And the reason why is because of precisely things like this. That when, when a, a guy like Jimmy Dore explicitly admits to sexually harassing somebody else and gets away with it, and he's still getting away with it, and Anna clearly did everything that she could to deal with that situation responsibly and give uh, fairness to Jimmy. And then Kyle can't even denounce that, even when he does a video to get involved? I don't know. I mean, Lily says Kyle is scared of Jimmy's audience. That's the long and short of it. I don't know. That is what it seems like. It's, it's weird that he calls Me Too high school drama. It's weird that he writes that off. It's weird that he would get involved in the drama but then not actually say anything about the drama even though he could have just remained out of it jimmy's audience keeps bl blaming anna for it yeah because jimmy blames anna for it yeah some hashtag me too bullshit really sticks with me that is very weird to me that is very very weird Yeah, the closest he came to denouncing it was saying he'd want to beat Jimmy up. But that's not very, that's not saying very much. It's a very roundabout way of denouncing it, isn't it? A 35-minute video with a bunch of irrelevant clips from the past that don't actually grant any new information. And then he ends by saying, I agree with Jimmy on everything policy related and on the personal stuff, I don't want to be involved. Then why did you make the video? That was your position at the beginning. Well, the takeaway here is that I, I don't think that, I don't know why, I mean, besides besides capitalizing on the drama, which Kyle said he didn't want to do, he said he didn't want to capitalize on the drama, and yet he made a 35-minute video about the drama without actually saying his opinions on the actual drama. I feel like this was a weak video. And again, I don't dislike Kyle Kalinske. I just think that there's room for critique here. I think that video was uh, very cautious towards Jimmy Dore and very uncautious towards uh, TYT. And it was especially, in my opinion, unfair to Anna. Anna, who did not drag, to my knowledge, did not drag Kyle Kalinske into this at all. Jimmy was the one who was heckling Kyle for not doing enough. And Kyle ultimately was easiest on Jimmy Dore. 
So I think that Kyle kind of owes a bit. If, if Kyle says that he's friends with Anna Kasparian, I think he owes his friend an apology. That's my takeaway. The takeaway of this drama mama, the conclusion you've all been waiting for is, Kyle, dude, you, you owe an apology to Anna. Maybe this sounds like parasocial, but you just openly did a video, a 35-minute video in which you said that Anna was your friend. And then you literally played a video of Jimmy openly, openly admitting that he sexually harassed her and that he thinks that's okay. And you can look at that video and see that Jimmy's fans are literally doubling down on that harassment. And you're just going to conclude that you don't want anything to do with it? I Again, I think Kyle owes Anna an apology. I think they should sit down as friends and have a real talk about it. And I think that Kyle should really consider whether he wants to keep building a bridge with somebody like Jimmy Dore, who dragged him into the drama. Remember, I've said this 10 times, but it was Jimmy who was negging on Kyle. Don't be a cuck, Kyle. Don't let Jimmy cuck you, Kyle. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Kyle, dude, you owe Anna an apology for this one, buddy. I'm sorry. You could have just kept your mouth shut, but you did a 30-minute video on it where you literally played the video footage of your buddy that you say is your friend, Jimmy Dore, openly admitting that he sexually harassed Anna Car Kasparian, and you call that Me Too bullshit, dude? Dude, come on. Dude, that is not that is not cool. That is that is really bad in my opinion. You didn't have to get involved. I understand if people don't want to get involved. I understand, but you did. You got involved and then you didn't do what was right. So there you go.